Hey guys, Joel, Police 108 Talk, back with you today. Got Officer Bosco with us today. Adio. Uh, through one of Bosco's contacts, we're, we got something for you today. It's, it's not current production, it's not the latest, greatest thing, but I think it is somewhat of a legend. Uh, we're going to be doing a SPAS 12 for you today, so give us just a minute. We're going to come in, we're going to go over some specs, and we're going to go over to the range. Bosco is going to go over some nomenclature and some special functions of it. And uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hey guys, here we are back with you at the tailgate. Uh, you're looking at the SPAS 12, which as you know, it was manufactured by uh, Franchi. It was designed to be a combat shotgun. It was in production from 1979 to 2000. In 2000, they actually came out with an enhanced version they called the SPAS 15. Uh, however, the production of that one stopped in 2005 as well. To the best of my knowledge, there are currently no SPAS shotguns being built. It's a dual mode shotgun. It was designed uh, to function primarily as a semi-automatic shotgun with the pump action mode, which you can switch it to, and Bosco will go over that in a few minutes. You could use it, you could change it to the pump action mode to fire low pressure ammunition, uh, less than lethal beanbag rounds, tear gas rounds. Uh, Bosco will show you in a minute when we go on the range, but you actually, there's actually a button under the fore end that you depress to change it from semi-automatic to pump action. Uh, they had four different magazine tubes. They had a, f a five shell one, which was on an 18 inch barrel. They had a six shell one that was on the uh, 21 and a half inch barrel. They had a seven shell one that was designed for the 19 and seven eighths inch barrel. This one is the eight shell version, uh, 21.5 inch uh, barrel. Uh, place of origin, Italy, as we all know that. Uh, it was actually designed in 1972. Total number of them built was 37,000. Uh, a lot of you remember the folding stock version of this from the Terminator. Weight on it's 8.75 pounds. It's two and three quarter inch shot shells on only. And like I mentioned earlier, it's pump action or gas actuated. So give us just a sec. We'll adjourn, get some shells, go over to the range. Uh, Bosco will go over the switching of it from semi-auto to pump. It is, it, it's not like the easiest thing in the world to do. So stand by, we'll be back with you in just a minute. Hey everybody, this is Officer Bosco, back here at Police 10 8 Talk. <coughs> you have to excuse me, I've been sick for the past two weeks, so I got this stinking cough I can't get rid of. Uh, anyways, today we're going to go over, actually, a buddy, a good buddy of mine um, <coughs> loaned us his Franchi Spas 12. Um, it's a very unique shotgun, they're actually not imported anymore. Uh, this was unfortunately one of the victims of the assault weapon ban, I think it was the 94 ban. I don't know if Joe can correct me, I think it's the 94 ban. Uh, so basically the ones in the country <coughs> that we have are basically the only ones we're going to get. Um, and of course, he said uh, Franchi doesn't basically manufacture these anymore. Uh, this is also kind of a unique, more unique version too because it has the full stock with the pistol grip. Um, I believe most of the ones that were imported with the ones with the folding stock on it because uh, that's basically the one that <coughs> most people were wanting instead of the full stock. Uh, but my buddy was going to kind of use this for possibly hunting, so that's the reason why he got the full stock on it. Uh, it's got a weird manual of arms. It's kind of a, a gun you really got to practice with to get to know it very well. You don't have to excuse the wind, but it's kind of windy today, so I'm going to try to talk about it with my hand. Uh, it does actually have two safeties on it. Um, you have a cross bolt safety, and then on this side you have a manual safety. Uh, I have this on fire, and I have this one on safe. That's kind of a unique feature. It actually has two safeties on it. Uh, the newer ones dropped it down to one. I mean, you really don't need two overall. <coughs> it's a little, little bit of overkill in a way. Um, it does have a shot shell holder. So if you need to <coughs> fire one shot, like if you were, like uh, Officer Joel was talking about, if you wanted to shoot like a special munitions or whatever, but you didn't want it to chamber another round, you basically just push this in and down like that. If I can get to go here. 
there we go. And what that does is it locks the ammunition chamber and it won't load from the from here. So you would have to single, <coughs> single, uh, basically load it every time when you have that feature on. Okay. <coughs> That's like if you want to shoot <coughs> a specialty round and you don't want the rest of the ammunition like you have this with double up buck. That's so you can load the specialty round. You don't have to worry about it loading, uh, loading a live round. All you do is push this up and forward and it goes back off and it'll feed from the chamber. <coughs> now the bolt release is kind of interesting on this. This is actually the bolt release. Now one of the things about this shotgun, which if you carry this as a regular deal, uh, if you shot a lot with it, it's it, it's something you're going to have to pay attention to. This releases the bolt, but what it also does is you have to have that depressed in to load the ammo. Okay, when you have that depressed in, it releases the, the feeding the feeding tube right there, that little latch right there. If you don't have that depressed, it's completely locked. So that's kind of weird idiosyncrasy with this rifle, with the shotgun. You have that pressed in, and it'll it'll release that. If it's open, you can. Also on semi-auto, if, auto, if the um, if the chamber's locked back, like I said, that's your bolt release. Is that right there as well? Okay, so that has a couple different functions to it. But <clears throat> if you're loading one of these, you need to know about that because you can't load it if you don't press it in. So it makes it kind of awkward, you know, when you're reloading it. It's not very easy to load it. Okay, because of that reason. <clears throat> now it does have combat sights on it. Uh, these actually do have adjustable chokes on it as well. I would think now probably you're never gonna you're probably not gonna be able to get any other ones I'm not sure if aftermarket ones or ones from other company would fit on it, uh, but it does come with adjustable choke tubes uh, This does have the eight round mag on it <coughs> And what it does it also you can adjust it from automatic to manual Okay, I'm gonna show you that here in a minute What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze off three shots on automatic and I'm gonna switch it to manual and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so stand by you ready? Okay, going hot. All right That's one thing about low brass with this gun too. Sometimes the low brass will not work in this gun. So the good thing is that you can switch it to manual. Okay. My safety is on. Okay. Now what you got to do on the on the top here, <clears throat> you actually have two sets of notches. One has an M, one has an A. Okay. The bot the bot the back of the buttstock lines up with the A right now, so that means it's an auto mode. Okay. Now to switch it is actually pretty easy. All you do is you got this button at the bottom. Okay. All you do is switch it down like that locks into place and now it's in pump and you'll see it's actually the, be the end of the end of this charging four in is right in line with the M <clears throat> so that's how you know if it's an auto or if it's in manual and like I said it has an A and it has an M so you know exactly where it's at okay depending on where that where that little cross section is at okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank off some shots manually and show you about how the pump works which like I said with the low brass the pumps probably a better option with it so stand by going hot all right Okay, now it's loaded on an empty chamber. Like I said, if you want to release that chamber forward, you have to hit this. Your bolt release, even on pump, like if it's locked back to get it to go forward, if there's no ammo in here, you gotta press that, press that in to get it to go forward. <clears throat> so like I said, it's kind of a weird thing about the shotgun. Um, this is a <laughs> shotgun. I know Eastern uh, European Police Departments love this shotgun. They still use them to this day. But that's one thing you got to know about this is that bolt release is kind of an idiosyncrasy of this gun. Okay, if you stand by real quick, uh, Officer Joel's going to take some shots. Stand by. Hey guys, Joel, Police 10 8 talk with you. Uh, going to send a few downrange with the spas, and I can already tell you the uh, butt stock's a little, little long for me, but I'll make do. So here we go. Range is hot. Low brass. Gun is empty. Tube's empty. Well, guys, we'll be right back with you. Give you some uh, thoughts, impressions on this. Be right back. Hey, guys. Joel Bosco back with you. Police 10-8 talk. Just got done firing the spas. I. Uh, as you can see on the video, we had a couple of failures to eject. Shooting some low brass bird shot I had laying around. I, I thought it did surprisingly well with the low brass. Uh, other than the stock being a little long for me because I've got short arms. 
fairly light shoot not not as light shooting as my fn but still got to handle a, a legendary shotgun so bosco what did you think yeah I, I have to agree with the stock i mean it's definitely for someone with like shorter arms like we have it's it's not going to be super comfortable shooting that and, and heaven forbid you got body armor on with us with body armor i don't think it'd be it'd be really hard to try to <laughs> I never shoot would. this thing yeah we probably have to go to the pump on this but um but other than the, <laughs> the longer stock um overall this is a great gun to shoot like i said you this is a legend you can't get these anymore so you know my buddy uh, letting us uh, borrow it for a day to let us shoot to show you guys is, is yeah shout out to nappy biscuit yeah nappy biscuit whose birthday coming soon happy birthday happy, happy birthday. birthday um so but yeah like i said it's a rarity we get to shoot a gun like this one thing about it is it almost seems like they tried to cram too many features almost over engineered in, in, in the one shotgun because it is yeah. definitely over engineered i mean it's a you know go to hell shotgun it's going to function yeah but the you know the having to mash the button every time you want to load a shell that that would get a little monotonous after a bit yeah if you, i mean if you use this gun like i said in europe the police departments in europe love this gun they use it quite often <clears throat> but they probably get a lot of trigger time with it and with if you're gonna if you happen to pick one of these up make sure you practice because like like he said the, the issue with that button on the side like it releases the bolt like i just did um you get you really need to know how to how this gun works before you take it out it's um, sweetie yeah it's a great it's a great shooting gun but like i said it's got a lot of got a, it has a little a few idiosyncrasies you got to be aware of though when you shoot it and which would all gun. be overcome with training if you yeah. happen to pick one up so. yeah know that weapon so know it well so guys uh give us a like or subscribe uh we'll keep doing our little videos and uh Bosco? Remember to be safe and watch your six.